Welcome to the Five Writers Five Minutes podcast, in which five writers share their top tips on writing. I'm Tristan Banks. I'm Deborah Abella. I'm Leon Tanner. I'm Sarah Armstrong. And I'm Zanny Louise. And today we are talking about dialogue, which is one of those weird sort of invisible parts of writing where I think it's difficult for people to really articulate how they approach writing. But I think that these experienced writers that I have with me on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, will be able to share with us some of their kind of magic. Deb, you have written scripts and things too. Does that sort of come into how you approach dialogue or not really? Right. Yes. Isn't that funny? I'd forgotten about my previous script writing <laughs> life. Yeah, that's funny. Um, uh, I guess it does. Yeah. I mean, of course, script writing and then writing middle grade, which is what I do now, is, is really different. It definitely informs it because, but in, in the same token, like, Everything you put on the page has to give us something new, has to tell us we haven't known before. But dialogue, there's so much responsibility to dialogue because we have to get to know stuff. Look, there's a fire. Um, I want to know how people feel. Um, you know, um, I want to get to know them as people. There's so much responsibility in dialogue. And I just actually today watched this really interesting video where someone was comparing bad dialogue in a film to good dialogue in a film. And they were mentioning things like, don't just have dialogue that fills mm. space. Mm. We don't want that. It has to tell us something we already, um, we don't know yet. Uh, but also they were talking about dialogue that was very thematic, you know, you must go to school because it's very good for your, you know, education, uh, you know, whatever. So don't let your characters tell us what the theme of the book is, right? Like, just make sure it's natural, make sure it actually feels like you're kind of overhearing a conversation between people. And also, and I know we touched on this in our read out aloud, if you read your dialogue out aloud, and maybe even get somebody else to play the other part, because um, that then will help you go, oh, that feels really stilted or it doesn't feel really natural. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, great one. Leon, yeah. how do you I, handle it? Yeah, I, I completely agree about it. We We talked a couple of episodes ago about reading aloud, and I think this is where reading aloud really comes into its own, mm. even more with just kind of ordinary writing. You read aloud and you ask yourself, could I say this? You know, could could yeah. someone I know say this? Or does it sound horribly clunky? Mm -hmm. Because we don't write dialogue exactly the way people speak, but we try to make it sound like real people talking. So a, it's a really good idea to kind of, you know, eavesdrop on people and listen <laughs> to how they speak. And what you notice is that people tend not to use whole sentences. And they don't mm -hmm. always say what they mean. So, you know, like mm -hmm. somebody, it's really interesting trying to write uh, a bit of dialogue where somebody isn't saying what they really mean. You know, they're kind of, they may be angry about something, mm. but, but they're not admitting it. So they're, they're kind of sniping about something else. Uh, the other things to look out for is uh, that people interrupt. Uh, they repeat themselves. Sometimes what they say doesn't entirely make sense. Uh, but if you listen to the way people talk, it's a really good way of trying to figure out how you might use dialogue. Wow. Great stuff. I agree, absolutely. And uh, to add to that thing of, you know, people interrupt, um, they trail off sometimes. They'll start mm -hmm. answering a question and then just stop or they won't answer the question. They'll answer a different question or just avoid it altogether. So all those things help inform the reader about the character one thing I think about when I'm writing a scene that's you know dialogue heavy is what does each character want from this scene what are they trying to get from this scene and then I want their dialogue to reflect that and ideally they don't want the same thing I mean sometimes people will be working together to want the same thing but very often they're wanting different things you know if your main character is up against the baddie they're going to want different things and so they're each trying to get what they want via dialogue mm. And the other thing I'll say is that I think about body language as being part of dialogue too, as they're moving, facial expressions and all that stuff is part of the way they communicate. So I think of that as dialogue. And one exercise I use all the time is I get a bit of dialogue and I pair it back and back mm -hmm. and back. I take almost until I think this is going to be nonsensical. It won't even, I pair it back almost to that point and then I have a look at it again and it's almost always better. Because yeah. people yeah. Mm. talk like, you know, very briefly. And finally, if two people know each other really well, they talk in shorthand. 
They yeah. won't say, oh, remember when we lived in Armadale and we had the three <laughs> crabapple trees down the bottom of our very long front yard. No, they'll just say, remember the crabapples in Armadale? Mm-hmm. Boom, that's enough. That's, I could say that to my mum and she knows exactly what I mean. So when people know each other well, they talk in shorthand. It's um, so easy to that. overdo dialogue, isn't it? I think yeah. that's a really big trap. It really is. I love that idea of pairing it back. And I was also going to say that too about the body language, Sarah, because so much can be said through gestures. So when you're doing your speech tags, which are like the said so-and-so, said so-and-so, you can just use said, I think. I mean, people have differing opinions about this, but my editors and myself, we we like just saying said the name of the character. And sometimes you don't even need that. Sometimes you can just have the gesture. So for example, you know, Molly swept a hair behind their ears or something to gesture what was being mm. said beautifully and that's really nice um no, to to gesture what was being said in the dialogue so using your body using your hands using the way uh the character moves uh to create expression rather than having it in the speech tag itself and one of the earlier bits of advice I had about dialogue I, I think it was when I was writing Tiggy and the Magic Paintbrush and my editor Melissa Kill. She's like, I like these other characters. I mean, we weren't focusing on the main character. We were focusing on the supporting cast. But to me, they sound quite similar. So yes. what would happen if you took away the said so-and-so? Mm. Would your reader be able to distinguish between the characters? So that's one of the exercises I do when I'm writing is to try and make the characters as distinguishable from each other as possible. And, again, that comes through by knowing the character really, really well. So as I'm writing my draft, I try and block out everything else and just get lost in the character. And to me, that's where the most genuine dialogue comes from how about you Tristan oh look these are really good tips it's interesting that it does feel like one of those invisible elements of writing and one that writers are reluctant to talk about sometimes because you don't quite know where it comes from often it's just you're being reflexive you're just feeling your way through the dialogue and then on a reread you realize all those things where you've said hey brother let's go down to the shop and see <laughs> that girl that you saw you know what I mean and and you're giving away too much there's too much exposition and it seems fake um I think improvisation is a really interesting one. I think a lot of filmmakers use improvisation where they'll get some actors together and they'll start improvising around a certain idea. And I feel like that's sort of what you do in your head when you're writing dialogue by yourself. You get to play all of the characters, which is pretty fun. You get Mm. to perform all these roles. Um, I also think there's a thing called verbatim theatre, which is where people go and record real conversations with people and then they listen back to those conversations and they take out lines of dialogue from those verbatim conversations. And you do get dialogue that sounds a bit more real where people Mm. leave off in the middle of their sentences and they Mm. say the opposite of what they mean and all that sort of stuff. But it's a really interesting way to get as close to the truth as you can in fiction. And I like the idea of perhaps using that sometime, um, some verbatim stuff in a a novel. That's really Um, nice. Yeah. So thanks. These are all really good ideas. I'm going to have to listen back to this episode <laughs> in order to be able to use some of these ideas in, in my own stuff. Because I reckon if you've got crackling dialogue and it's minimal and you're saying as little as possible in the dialogue, yeah. um, I really think that it, it improves the strength of your manuscript so much. I so- think um, just on that, you can take away words like, I have to take away words like but and so and ah and um, because in my original draft, I have so many ahs, ohs, and yeah. I pretty much go through and take all of those out because that, and that will add to that really crisp yeah. dialogue as well. Those, yeah. so, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And people don't often use the person's name in like if i'm just speaking Mm -hmm. to you i don't say um so what do you think sarah i might in a podcast but in real life Mm. i wouldn't call you sarah all the time whereas in dialogue you so often hear people say the character's name again and again and again Mm -mm. it's it's gonna be a bit annoying Mm -hmm. anyway thank you very much (laughs) we've gone over our five we have sorry (laughs) Um, that was dialogue for you i hope that this inspires you to play around with your own dialogue and improve it and uh, we'll see you again next week Bye. Bye. Bye.